As before, when we're looking at square numbers, we can confidently say that all even numbers squared will result in a number that's congruent to 0 mod 4, and any odd number squared will always equal a number that's congruent to 1 mod 4. When we're then subtracting one square number from another, there are only four options. Either the two square numbers are both odd, they're both even, or they're one of each. The first two always results in a number that's 0 mod 4, and none of those are prime, so we're effectively halving our effort. But the last two results in either a number that's 1 mod 4, or 3 mod 4. In a way, you could say that all odd numbers, and therefore all odd prime numbers, are clearly in one of two camps. If it's a 1 mod 4 prime candidate, then you only need to consider two square numbers where the bigger square is odd and the smaller square is even. If the prime candidate is a 3 mod 4 number, you only need to consider where the bigger square is even and the smaller number is odd. When we do trial division of a prime candidate, there's essentially only two options that we're interested in. Either the number is evenly divisible, or it's not. If it leaves a remainder of, say, 2, then you can tell that the number 2 lower than the prime candidate isn't prime, but it doesn't really help with the prime candidate itself. But using modularity with the difference of two squares, we can make things far less black and white. That means that every calculation potentially teaches us something, even when it's not successful. We can see this idea on a 4x4 grid that represents the options in the square sieve. It's only 16 numbers, but it represents all of the numbers in the sieve because the remainders and patterns repeat every four numbers. You can effectively tile these squares forever. Now across the top of the remainders 0, 1, 2, and 3. Below that is the square of each of the remainders, and below that is the remainder of the squares mod 4. This is x and x squared mod 4. Down the side are the same, but for y and y squared. Each square in the middle is x squared minus y squared, but shown as the remainder mod 4. For example, this square represents every 3 mod 4 number squared minus a 2 mod 4 number squared, which results in a 1 mod 4 number. We can see that all 1 mod 4 numbers are an odd x squared minus an even y squared. Critically though, 1 doesn't appear in some of the rows and some of the columns. We can tile this two-dimensional grid, but we can also add a third dimension and create these tiles for any divisor. Now if there's a combination of squares we're looking for, it needs to be possible with all the divisors and not just some. As a worked example, if we test the prime candidate, 1189. The square root of the prime candidate is 34 point something, which means that the lower bound is 35 squared. If we calculate the prime candidate doesn't have 2, 3 or 5 as a factor, that means the minimum possible divisor is 7, which makes the upper bound 88 squared. That initially gives us 54 possible square numbers for x squared. The prime candidate leaves a remainder of 5 when you divide by 8, which means that x is not even. That gives us 27 possible square numbers for x squared. The prime candidate leaves a remainder of 1 when you divide by 6, which means that the x is not divisible by 3. That gives us 18 possible square numbers for x squared. Incidentally, it also means that y is evenly divisible by 3. The prime candidate leaves a remainder of 9 when you divide by 10, which means that the x does not end in 1 or 9. That gives us 12 possible square numbers for x squared. The prime candidate leaves a remainder of 1 when you divide by 9, which means that the x is either a 1 mod 9 number or an 8 mod 9 number. That gives us 8 possible square numbers for x squared. The prime candidate leaves a remainder of 6 when you divide by 7, which means that x is not a 2, 3, 4 or 5 mod 7 number. That gives us two possible square numbers for x squared. At this point, we could pick a different divisor, or we could test the two remaining possible square numbers for x squared. If we square 35 and 55, we get 1,225 and 3,025. If we subtract the prime candidate 1,189 from each of these numbers, we get 36 and 1,836. Now the square root of 1,836 is not a whole number, but the square root of 36 is 6, which means 1,189 is not a prime number. We also know that its factors are 35 minus 6 and 35 plus 6, or 29 and 41. 